Thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon and those who are going to be watching it in retail, uh, I'm sorry, in replay. Uh, Rachel and I had some technical difficulties. Uh, StreamYard really had technical difficulties uh, showing live on LinkedIn. So we have started this new broadcast link and uh, I hope you'll be able to catch us on that. So um, I met Rachel, you know, in, in Clubhouse. She was one of the very first people I ever met and I've learned so much from her, you know, already. So Rachel, I'm so happy you, you know, agreed to join me today. So tell us a little bit about you uh, and your business. Sure. So um, thank you for having me. I'm glad we worked out all the kinks. Sometimes technology <laughs> is not our friend, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so I am uh, Rachel Simon. I am in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a founder of Connect the Dogs Digital, uh, and my business is 100% focused on LinkedIn. So I help professionals to really utilize LinkedIn in the most authentic and valuable way possible. Um, so whether that is, you know, whatever their business goals are. So that's for new, obviously we all, we all want new business. So <laughs> business development, if people are trying to build their thought leadership, really just get brand awareness or just build a following. Um, and really a lot of the focus is going to be building that foundation, which is your profile and then kind of all of the components um, that go along with that the profile, understanding who's in your network, really understanding content, how to create great, meaningful, engaging content, and then sort of, again, reaching um, the, the pinnacle of whatever goals you have. Um, and so I really love it. I never would have imagined this is what I would be doing. Uh, and I think if you told me this 10 years ago, I would have laughed at you and said, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I, I go ahead. I, I mean, I came from nonprofit. I worked in nonprofit for 15 years. Um, and I did a, a lot of marketing and really, um, found an interest in social media because I felt like the organization I was looking for at the time was missing the opportunity to really utilize Facebook specifically to help tell their stories. Cause it was a really dynamic organization did so much good in the community. And so I basically got them to agree to let me start a social media strategy. And that sort of got me on that path. And uh, I started helping a client after I left that organization and was doing sort of independent consulting. I had a client that really needed a lot of help with LinkedIn. And um, I found really a love and a passion for the platform um, because it is such an amazing place to build relationships and to meet business goals at the same time. Oh, you know, it, it certainly is. You know, I'm one of those people I had, the, I've had the profile for a long time, but just wasn't really um, using it. You know, I won't even say effectively, I really wasn't using it at all. So I, um, you know, I've learned so much and really changed all of my strategies, you know, this year. So I, you know, I asked you to come on because I saw that you do this for individuals as well. And, you know, my primary audience is uh, job seekers. Um, so I have some questions and I'm assuming the profile is the same. So I'm hoping people are going are able to see this. Um, can you let us know in the comments? Uh, Cause it looks like the live is kind of freezing um, on my profile on my profile. So I'm, I'm not, uh, I do see it. That's oh. good. You do see it? It's, it's running okay? I mean, I can see it. It's a little, yeah. Oh, okay. It's lagging a little bit. Okay. So I'll just, mm -hmm. I'll just snip this out. So, okay. So, um, so let's start by talking about, you know, creating that compelling profile, which I think is, you know, obviously valuable for anyone, whether they're looking for a job or advancing their career or, you know, starting their, uh, or, or trying to get clients for the business. And, you know, I will mention that I've talked to recruiters, and, you know, they do spend a lot of time on LinkedIn uh, sourcing candidates. And when they're looking in their in their feed on, you know, LinkedIn, the, re the recruiter platform, they're not able to see too much. They see really a very um, sort of abbreviated or truncated uh, LinkedIn profile. But two things they do see are the headshot and the headline. So mm, interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's just when when you start hearing about the, what they see, because, you know, we may be looking at things a little bit different. I mean, they do see uh, some of the, the positions, 
But, you know, it's always the headline and the um, and the headshot, which, you know, is what we all kind of look to when we're looking, you know, in, in our search. Yeah. And do you think that that's what they see and then they can dig deeper into the profile that I don't really know oh, what it's yes. like on this. so then the other pieces are important yes but your headline needs to really hook the uh the right. reader the headline and the headshot you know mm-hmm. you want that smiley headshot not you know the angry mean headshot or so, none uh, or none i know and i'm going to ask you about that next but you know what would you say are sort of the components to a compelling headline um yeah that's uh the headline is so important and there's a lot of uh you know there's no right or wrong answer. And it's funny, I don't know if you saw this week, Andy Foote, or last week, maybe he put up a post about like kind of challenging people, their headlines are too long and they're too full of extraneous information. And and I, I definitely think he has a point. Um, you know, 220 characters is a lot of real estate for a headline. And the most important piece of that headline is going to be your first 40 to 50 characters because that's what's going to be visible when you're doing other activities on the platform. So front loading it is really, really important. Um, You know, unless you're the CEO of like Delta, um, I wouldn't lead with CEO or like title at company because that is not super compelling information versus leading with something descriptive, something that talks about what you do, why you do it and why you love it. So leading with those really powerful like words that are going to hook the reader to want to read the rest of it is really, I think, the most important piece. Um, And I do think there's some question about using dividers. Does it affect search? I don't really know. I think it's important to break up the text somehow, whether you're going to use the, you know, up and down, the bar or a hyphen or a period or just something so that your, your kind of sections are... Uh, just del- you can see where the breaks are because uh, you don't want to whole sea of words. Oh, I, you know, exactly. You know, that's one of the things that I, I, you know, tell people about a resume. You know, you have to have lines separating different sections. You know, imagine if you went to a restaurant and you looked at the menu and everything was just kind of all together and there was nothing separating it. You know, it, it really just wouldn't be that, uh, I don't know, maybe appetizing uh, could be the right word. So, you know, yeah, I did see Andy's uh, post and it's actually, you know, made me rethink um, what I'm doing for my headline. I will admit that, you know, uh, I on the one hand, I really believe that more isn't always better. Sometimes more is just more. But I admit that I do use that uh, 220 characters and I think you can go to 240 on your mobile so oh, wow. and and one of the things that you know i pride myself as a writer um is to edit my text and not fall in love mm-hmm. with my words but what what can people you know like me uh do to you know sort of pull back and and choose what are the the sort of juiciest bits to uh share on that headline yeah i think it's good to get like feedback from people so like if you can choose a couple people who you really uh trust and you you have a lot of respect for the way that they approach the platform, getting some feedback on, you know, if you saw this and didn't know me, what would you think? Um, And to get some, some um, support with that, you know, and writing a headline is, is not easy. Writing a headline, writing your about section, these are not easy to do. You know, it's very hard to sit down at your computer and pull it up and be like, okay, I'm going to write my headline right now. Um, So one of the, one of the things I do with my clients is I have them brainstorm just what are words that you use to describe yourself? What are words that you use to describe what you do? Just get those words out of your head and on a piece of paper and make sure you indicate like what are the most important words to include. And then use I use those to like, I take a little bit from here and a little bit from here and craft about four or five Um, options for them and some of them are very very similar where they'll be pretty much the same except maybe they'll be like a couple words different or I'll take this word and move this phrase and put it here Um, and that's worked out really really well to sort of almost like a little puzzle yeah you know I I love that you say that because I do also you know when I create headlines for my clients I always create like three different options and they're a little bit different a lot of the key things um, are there, you know, sort of already. And I love what you said about getting those objective 
you know, opinions. And I want to talk again now about sort of the headshot. And I think I mentioned to you that, you know, I recommend people use photo feeler. I use it myself. Love it. I'm not a, okay. So you love it too. Okay, great. Um, so, you know, because people who look at your photo, they know you. And so they see the person they know in that headshot. So, but, you know, when people are sort of taking the headshot, um, and, you know, there are sites where you can just take out the background. So even if the background is, I don't know, your yard and you don't want that, it's not professional. What are some things that people should think about when they're, you know, doing that headshot? Um, yeah, it's so important. I have a poll going up right now about um, what's the saddest gray box on LinkedIn. Is it your profile photo, your banner photo, or if you like have a business, your company page, which if you have those empty. So Profile photo is by far and away the winner. Like people want to see a profile picture. Um, and really the keys are like, it, it has to look professional. I mean, you can't, no selfies, the lighting needs to be good. It needs, I don't care if you love the picture of you from 10 years ago because you look skinny and you know, your hair looked great. You don't, if you don't look like that anymore, you really shouldn't have that as your profile photo. Um, oh. <laughs> right. Uh, no, I, I agree with that. There's nothing worse than meeting someone in real life and you go to a conference and you know you don't recognize the, the, the people or if you're a if you're a job seeker and you go in for an interview, you know, and they see you, you want to make sure that they do recognize you. Um and you know, I I had that big, you know, argument, you know, I with well not an argument, but I've had that discussion with some clients and you know, once they take a new shot and you know, take out the background and, and run through photo filler, they really see a big difference in how people look at it. You know, the argument I had was with my husband who was using this, you know, picture from a car show that he loved. Well, yeah, that's nice, but you know, it's not really a very professional. So. Yeah, sometimes they're, they're tough uh, to, to, to convince. Um, and, uh, you know, it just needs to be a nice picture where you're making eye contact with the camera and I think smiling, I mean, I guess in your brand is like to be very serious and to be like, <laughs> you know, but I think it, it's good to just be smiling because you're approachable and people want to engage with you. I did my picture. Um, I took new headshots in the spring because my picture was really old. My hair was really short in it. Like I didn't feel like it looked like me. And um, I used this. Uh, I got a, re a referral from through John Esperian who is just awesome and everyone should be following him uh, uh, for a photographer who did virtual photo shoots. So his name's John Cassidy and he's based in the UK and literally he does it through your iPhone. There's an app and we did a photo session in my kitchen. It took 20 minutes and the pictures came out amazing. My husband did it too and his pictures came out great. So it's like there's these opportunities and tools and people you can get a great headshot. You just need to just find the right person for you. So it's really, really important. And the other important piece is, except for certain very specific circumstances, your profile photo really needs to be sent to public. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I, <laughs> I agree with you. Um, you know, LinkedIn is, you know, it's, it's sort of the, you know, the business platform, but it's also a social network. And, you know, when you're, if your profile, even if your headshot is set to private, I mean, why are you on there if you don't want anybody to see you? I mean, I do know that there are um, some instances, I have friends who work with clients in, um, you know, intelligence or something, you know, government intelligence or something, they don't have to photo, but that's rare. That's yeah. rare. Yeah. The only other case I think that somebody brought to my attention once was like, there are people who have, you know, serious like domestic violence issues that they're dealing with and it's not necessarily physically safe for them to have their photo out there. I give them a significant amount of grace in that regard, but everybody else needs to have their pictures set to public. No yeah, matter what. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. And I actually have worked with somebody in a similar situation and, you know, but for the most part, people are afraid of, you know, if I put my photo on there, you know, there's all these isms. Are people going to think I'm too young? Are people going to think I'm too old or, you know, whatever. And you know what? Those things are out there. I mean, yes, they are out there. They're, you know, um, but, you know, they're going to see you. They're going to see you. It's right. not and like you can just hide. 
And would you want to work for a company or with somebody who judged you based on how you looked anyway? I mean, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree with you. And it so depends on the photo. You know, when I was working um, as a recruiter, I worked with a woman who was in her 60s. Um, I didn't, you know, ask her, but we were, you know, we chatted a lot on the phone and she just happened to tell me. And, you know, I was working in the uh, digital marketing space, which is a young space. Um, and uh, her photo was just vibrant, and energetic, just like she was. And she was one of the top candidates for the position that I was um, I was uh, trying to, to fill. So um, let's move on to uh, just quickly about the about section because you had mentioned that before. So what's um, um, what's your advice on on telling your story there? Uh, lead with a hook. So lead with something. Um, you know, I know I, I, I'm curious in the in the job seeker world um, what the thought is, but I think for uh, the, the kinds of people that I tend to work with, which you know are people that are sort of in their careers that are not looking for uh, their next job. When they lead with, I have 30 years of experience in X, Y, and Z. I mean, that's great, but I don't really care if you have 15, 20, 30, or 100 years of experience. I wanna know about you. So leading with a hook, something that's going to get the reader to want to say to hit the click, you know, see more button. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my favorite examples is I, I helped a woman who um, worked in the dental industry. She was, she had a, like a boutique firm that did marketing for dental, for dentists and people and other businesses, in the dental industry. And then she had transitioned into a sales role for a company. And um, we led her, uh, started her about section with the sentence, I love the dentist. Yes, you read that right and went on from there. So I was like, that's gonna get people to want to read more about you because most of us don't love the dentist. I mean, so figuring out what is what is something that's going to engage the reader. I mean, if you come from, you know, like the journalism background, same thing, what's going to get somebody to wanna read the whole article? Oh, you know, ab absolutely. And, you know, people, Pretty much, they all have these stories, these reasons. You know, I've worked with people who are working in medical publishing because their father was a dentist and they didn't want to be a service person, but they wanted to be, you know, in that, you know, in that area. So, you know, there's there's so many things that, that people have to tell. And, you know, people do, they go there because whether they're hiring a, someone for a business or if they are um, hiring someone to fill a position, you know, people are going there to learn more about you. It's not just your professional experience or the years or, you know, whatever the skills and the, you know, professional part of your, uh, of you, of you, you know, what you do. They want to know who you are and, you know, yeah. what drives you. And, and I don't know if, I feel like this shift happened maybe like four years ago, three or four years ago where, every we all it was sort of moved from it being much more formal and written in the third person to written in the first person and i think that's made such a positive difference in making linkedin a much more like engaging and social place versus you know it's so boring to read about somebody like their seed like as if you introduce them at a conference. I mean, use that when you introduce somebody, you know, in a professional setting, but I, I, I wanna hear about you. Yeah, right, you don't wanna be bored. I mean, so many people, um, I, I think that, you know, they just don't realize how boring it is when they start, you know, uh, Annette Richmond founded this company and blah, blah, nobody cares, nobody wants to read that. They wanna know <laughs> what, what drives you. So, um, so I, I appreciate, you know, all the profile tips, but, you know, one thing that's so important, you can have the very best, most compelling, exciting profile, but, you know, that's not enough. You can't just kind of, you know, set it and forget it. You need to be, you know, active. You know, I learned, you know, changed my whole idea recently of seeing it as this, you know, platform to seeing it more as like the water cooler. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so many people, they're not active on LinkedIn until, you know, they want to get more business with the company or they're looking for a job or they want to advance or, you know, whatever. So if someone, you know, they have that profile, they finally get, you know, this weekend, they go down and they fill out, you know, put all that awesome information. What do you suggest they do to start, you know, uh, 
to be engaging, um, you know, to start engaging on on LinkedIn. You know, often people will say comments, but you know, I'm really interested to hear, you know, what you would uh, your thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, before I answer that, somebody messaged me that I guess the LinkedIn invite because the link was different uh, says it was like canceled. Can you, while I'm talking, can you pop no, this I, link? I or? actually, um, if, if you're still there, I put in the chat for the old broadcast, my LinkedIn profile, and you can watch it there. All right. Perfect. I, I, you know, that's the only thing that I'm, I'm sure to do. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the things I, I really, really learned in the last year is uh, that LinkedIn is all about give to get. You know, we you can put out the best content possible, but if you just throw it up there and walk away from the platform, it's not going to be as successful as if you spend time commenting on other people's posts um, and engaging in your post, engaging in the comments that people are taking the time to, to uh, share on what you're creating. So it's that really that building that goodwill, right? LinkedIn really wants people to engage and rewards the engaged users. So the more you can engage with other people's content and with, you know, people in the right way through direct messaging, the better um, your whole strategy is going to be. Oh, it, you know, exactly. You know, most of the, the engagement doesn't happen in the comments. It happens in the, the messaging where people, you know, they meet each other on other places, a conference, on Clubhouse, wherever, and they connect on LinkedIn. And the, you know, the ongoing, I would say, engagement um, really starts there and um, or maybe continues there. So, you know, there's so many different types of, of content that, you know, you, you can comment. You can write a text post. You can do a video. You know, you can do a uh, carousel, you know, graphic or something. So if you're starting, what would you recommend people do? I mean, because I know there's some differences in engagement, but, you know, I'm, you know more about that than I do. Yeah, a good <laughs> technology is just not our friend. I don't see you, but I can hear you and I can see myself. So I do um, not know what happened. It's, it's just... <laughs> Um, okay, somebody just said they could still, I was commenting, they could still see and hear me because, you know, you weren't here. So, um, oh my you know, God, we, Whoa, we, what a Friday. <laughs> I know, I know. So, I mean, you know, we can just continue and muddle through this or if you like. Yes, we'll just keep going. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, you're just going to do a bunch of editing, so <laughs> to edit I, out I all now. <laughs> I am now, so, okay. So, um. So we talked about the about section and we talked about, um, you know, engaging. And I had just asked you if, uh, okay, they can see us again. Uh, okay. And I had, we had talked about, you know, commenting um, and being, you know, LinkedIn being the water cooler, et cetera. And I started asking you about, about the techniques. And um, I think I had just asked you, you know, can video or, you know, audio. Uh, you asked how, to, how do we get started? Yeah. So how do we get started? How do yeah. get started? And you know what, because different things um, get different engagement. So what, what do you recommend people use for their you know, status updates? Um, well, I think before, you know, some people are just not comfortable, like jumping right in and posting. Um, and so if, if uh, people fall into that category, a good way to start to start to build that um, comfort level and the practice is by commenting on people's posts. So if you can choose five to 10 people in your world where it, it would make sense for you to start commenting on what they're creating, which is assuming that they're creating content regularly and not just great post, please don't ever <laughs> write great post, um, but where you can put some thought behind a comment you start to build your voice and that's a really good place to kind of dip your toe in the water. Um, and then from there, really just picking, pick a, a cadence that you can consistently achieve if you want to start creating your own content. So I think that, you know, people can get very intimidated by content creation. Like, oh, I have to post every single day or it's not going to be worthwhile. If you can post once a week and consistently post once a week, that's awesome because after a couple, maybe you do that for a month or two and you feel like, all right, I'm really getting the hang of this. 
I'm going to start posting twice a week. So just building the practice again and thinking about, well, who am I talking to? What do I want to be talking about? And how can I continue to sort of build um, goodwill on the platform by responding to comments on my posts and engaging with comments on other people's posts? It makes such a huge difference. Um, and so, you know, that's just a good starting point. And from there, thinking about, well, what is, what's the kind of content that is comfortable and natural for you? So if that's writing text posts, great. If you like to share photos, cool. If you are a video person, more power to you, make those videos. <laughs> um, so, you know, I like to mix up content because I think LinkedIn gives us so many content um, types to play with. Uh, so I think polls are super fun. I love putting the carousel posts together, which is like where you create a little midi like slide deck. And uh, I use Canva, which is a super awesome tool that every business owner should be using, um, unless you're a graphic designer. And then you use something <laughs> probably much more fancy than Canva. Uh, yes. But, you know, mixing it up is really, really good. And then thinking about well, what do I talk about? And I think that's the other place where people are like, oh, I have nothing to say. I'm no, I, I have no idea what, what I could even post. And most people have tremendous amounts of content at their fingertips. They're just blind to it. So they're not seeing it. Um, you know, they don't see that this blog that they wrote on their company's website can be used in 10 different ways uh, versus, uh, you know, other than just posting the link and moving on. So really... Content is so much, that's the most fun. I think content is, after putting the great profile together, I have the most fun brainstorming content ideas because that's where you get really creative. Oh, you know, I agree with you 100%. And thank you for telling people that, no, you don't have to post every single day. If it's once a week, once a week. And I think people get hung up on creating this perfect content and, you know, I've, I've read a lot of um, Seth Godin and I actually took a marketing course with him. And he said, you know, it's better to do it than just may have it perfect. It's better to just get it out there. And um, Ed Hahn, who I'm sure you know, um, he posts every day one, I don't know, maybe three, four, five line LinkedIn tip, LinkedIn tip of the day, every single day. And it's he gets great engagement. He shares amazing, um, you know, tips and content once a day, a few lines. So it's not like you have to write the great American novel and then, you know, pull out chapters for your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. And such a good example. I'm glad you brought him up because what I love about uh, Ed's content is that it is so him, right? It's so on brand. You know that you're going to get the same kind of content from Ed every day. You're going to get a really good tip. Um, and he's going to make you think, you know, and kind of teach you something. And that's it. You're not going to get a video from him. You're not going to get a text, you know, a, a slider or a poll, but he's going to give you a really killer tip and it's going to be very helpful. And yeah. I, I love that. No, I, I really do too. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, I hear people talking about, you know, LinkedIn is business and, you know, should you be um, talking about, you know, personal, some people talk about personal things, some people do not, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a little resistant to it. I share a little bit, but, you know, think too much. And I heard somebody recently um, say it's, it's not so much the difference between personal and professional, it's private and professional. So mm, that, oh, I like that. Yeah, I like it too. And I can't remember who I heard it from, but I, I use that all the time. And, you know, there, there is a big, a big difference between something that's really private, you know, in your family or with friends or something. Um, and something that's, you know, personal, which might be, you know, you at a barbecue or something like that. So yeah, I, I think just like everything on LinkedIn, it has to be inherently who you are. So if you are like, I am an open book, I talk about everything, then anything's on the table. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you are really, that is not your style, then nobody's expecting to hear that from you. I kind of uh, go a little bit on the personal side, um, but I try to tie it to something that relates to 
um, like a professional journey. So, I mean, I put a really personal post on Father's Day uh, about my dad. And my dad passed away um, almost 17 years ago. And, you know, my dad taught me, my dad never felt like a professional success, but he was incredibly successful. And so my lesson in that was like, you don't have, you know, success is not defined by your job. Um, so figuring out how do you tie something that you relate to in your life um, to a broader idea. You know, I've shared posts about my kids' sports. My daughter is a swimmer. There's a lot of lessons I have learned from watching her compete at swim meets over the years. My son's a baseball player. You know, there's life lessons from, you know, you learn on the mound. So I like to kind of relate it because I want people to connect with me as a person. So I want them to find me to be fun and engaging and somebody they want to get to know better. And so for me, that's the way I um, approach it. But I definitely love that idea that like there are certain things that are private that I'm not talking about on LinkedIn. And, uh, and that's a different category. I don't talk about that on Facebook either. There's no, <laughs> that does not go on social media. Oh, so yeah, I, I, I hear you. You know, I have friends who posted photos on Facebook of themselves, you know, in the hospital bed after surgery. And I'm like, yeah, that's a little too much for me. A little too much. Yeah, um, exactly. But, but I, you know, I remember, um, I read that, that post that you wrote about your dad and, you know, it, it's so meaningful because, you know, when people are thinking about success, it has to be, what is success to them? Not, you know, mm-hmm. what is success, you know, the quote success that, you know, um, is, is, is out there or maybe other people see as, as success. So, um, yeah. And I think also, you know, so many of us, you know, our parents, or somebody in our lives, they were a huge influence on us. And so acknowledging that um, is a point of connection with other people uh, that particularly, you know, Father's Day, there was a lot of dad posts out there. I really liked, you know, they're very meaningful to read because it it shows you something you may have in common with somebody, Um, you know, like Jules White, posted about her dad too. And it was also a picture from her wedding. And I was like, man, our dads would have been like such good pals. And they were like cut from the same cloth. So it just brings that point of connection for people because that's what we're here to do. We're here to connect and uh, build those, you know, real relationships. Oh, you know, I agree with you. And I love those posts that you do about your kids and the sports because, you know, those things are so related. And, you know, people think that, well, I don't know what to post. There's no content, but there's really content everywhere. It's just a there matter is, yes. of using whatever is in your life, your business, um, and, you know, and, and uh, sharing that in a way that will be meaningful, you know, to other people. Um, maybe- yeah, and, you know, and another thing, like one of my friends uh, is a really prolific reader, and she will basically, like, do a summary of whatever book she's read. Uh, she does a lot of like business books and, and those kinds of things. And that's, that's sort of her thing, right? And Ed, Ed's LinkedIn got his LinkedIn tips. And my friend Lori is all about her book summaries. And I love those because like, I'm not a huge reader. So I really enjoy reading her summaries and getting a sense of sort of what these books are about. And maybe it's something I'll decide to pick up and read myself. So just kind of find your voice and what you like to talk about. And, um, and have fun with it. I think at the end of the day, if you're not having fun, it's like, well, what's the point? <laughs> Why am I spending so much time here? Yeah, you know, if you're if you're not having fun, you may as well have that angry face in your headshot. You know, you, you do want to want to uh, do it. And you know, I um, you know, I often tell people that you know, you're right. You you have to do what you feel comfortable with. If it's you know how how often you post, whether you do video, whether you you know post photos or talk about, you know, personal stories with a professional slant to them. But my recommendation, and I'm, I'm curious to what you would say is, you know, try it though, try something different. If, you know, if you put in a little text post all the time to try something different. Yes. Yeah. You should definitely mix it up. And also, you know, if something is a little out of your comfort zone, like video for a lot of us, myself included, all the more reason to try it. Like you, you have to stretch and try and experiment because you may find something that you really love doing. You just wouldn't know if you didn't try it. So 
you know, I think there's rare exceptions. Again, like going back to Ed, the example of where he's pretty, he's always consistent with the way he posts. Um, But there's not that many people like that, I think, um, that I can think of where they really only post one one type of content um, and it works really well for them. Oh, I, I agree with you. You know, I've known Ed back when I used to be on Twitter chats, you know, a decade ago and Twitter was really hot and, and you know, and, and it was very much um, an in, engaged uh, community on there. So, you know, and he has been doing this thing for, for as long as I can remember and it really does uh, work for him. But, you know, to your point about you may find that you love it, you know, I don't like to see my face. I don't like to hear my voice, but I did started a podcast a year ago and I started doing videos. And you know what? I love it now because I find it's kind of yeah. easier than creating a post. So, uh, you know, it's just you never know what you may fall in love with um, once you once you uh, try it. So speaking of video, um, I recently <laughs> learned, no, I recently learned that you can actually message your connections using audio. So you can, you know, hold down and speak and, you know, send a message to your connections. And, you know, people, people started doing that to me and I thought, oh, that's really cool. So I started trying it too. And, um, and I'm just, uh, just recently learned, you know, how you can do it with, uh, with video, um, to send a video. Yeah. And, you know, I've only received one video message in my life. Oh, in my life. Yeah. yeah. So far. Um, but it was, I remember it and it was a few months ago and I still remember it. And I, you know, I need to, you know, start trying that. And, um, I heard, uh, uh, Niraj, actually, I was listening to him this morning speak with, uh, with Diana and he mentioned that, you know, he has great success with that. Um, in, you know, sending voice messages to potential clients, um, or clients. And I would think job seekers, if they're, you know, wanting to say thank you after the interview could have great success. So, um, yeah, that seems like a great, uh, thing to, to recommend to a job seeker because you can hear in your, people can hear in your voice, your enthusiasm for something. Um, and so sending a voice memo feels like a great thing to try. Uh, I've gotten, I get a, I've gotten a handful of both of them. Um, and I like them. I like them. They're nice to get. And sometimes I'll send a voice memo if I just have, uh, some, you know, like if I don't have my, <laughs> if I don't have my readers with me and I can't really <laughs> see my phone to type, um, then I will leave a voice memo <laughs> for somebody if I just have something sort of casual to share or a question to ask. Um, they're nice to get to because it is fun to hear people's voices. Uh, you know, before, prior to Clubhouse was like, we didn't know what anybody sounded like unless they did videos. Right, right. And, you know, it, it's also, um, I use them, you know, regularly, but not all the time. And most of the audio messages that I send are, you know, just to say thank you for, for something that somebody's done so they can hear in my voice how really grateful and thankful I am mm-hmm. for you know, whatever it is that they, that they did, uh, you know, for me or with me or, you know, something that I just appreciate. So, yeah. So let's, um, you know, we're, we're getting sort of around the end, you know, we can, um, one of the things that LinkedIn, um, has rolled out, uh, I guess in the last, I don't know, 30 days, maybe a little bit longer is the whole, you know, cover story and creator mode and, you know, um, cover story it was originally i think 20 seconds and now it's 30 seconds um and it comes up is that if people haven't seen it like they call it i guess the harry potter where somebody clicks on your profile and you pop up just for you know a couple of seconds what what are um some tips for people who you know want to uh use that well i think everybody (laughs) everyone should use it if they have it um and you would know if you have it you have to look at the mobile app And if you have the little plus, there's a circle around your profile picture with a little plus um, on your mobile app, then you have it. So um, a couple of like more logistical tips would be create the video like on something else, whether you like to make videos on Instagram or 
or TikToks or, you know, I used an app. Um, somebody re recommended it and I will, I got to look at my phone to see what it's called. I used a video called Clip, I think Jillian Whitney recommended it. Clip Champ because it did the subtitles. Um, yeah. So I created yeah. it in that. And then um, it has to be portrait. Like, so you want it, your phone to be this way. <laughs> Cause usually we film videos this way. Yeah. Um, and I really stressed over mine like big time. So I put it off big, I put it off. I procrastinated so much and I finally did it and I was like, okay, I get this thing done. Um, know what you want to say, but don't read from a script and just try to be as natural as you possibly can. Um, I'm, I think, you know, some people are amazing at making videos and some people's cover stories are really, really creative. Also just don't get caught up in like that piece of it. Just put it out there, get it done. You can always make a new one. Um, but talk about who you are, what you do and why you do it. it exactly, you know, it's not like it's up there forever. <laughs> You know, so, yeah. many, you know, the headshot, the headline, you know, it's not like you put something up there and it's there forever. It, you know, if, if things aren't working for you, just, just change them. And, um, you know, there are so many things I actually, um, learned from, uh, Nick Rayburn to use, uh, clips, which, you know, some people use it yeah. to say thing and it's free and it's free and you can record little clips and piece them together and, you know, add little, you know, um, graphics and, and things like that and subtitles and subtitles. Yeah. And I was actually messaging with Nick, like when I was stressing about mine and he, you know, he's in that category of like, of course his cover story is going to be amazing because yeah. that's what he does. That's his, that's his whole thing. So his <laughs> is going to be like a million times better. It's going to be like Spielberg quality. Um, but he was very helpful and very kind, you know, gave me a little bit of feedback on mine. So I appreciated that very a lot. Um, yeah, and you know, to your point, everything on your LinkedIn profile needs to be edited. At least, you need to take a, a good pass at it at least twice a year to make sure, is this all still relevant? Am I using the messaging the consistently everywhere? You know, like I did a big website copy overhaul um, earlier this year, and that meant I needed to do an, a copy overhaul on everything because I needed everything to be consistent with messaging. So LinkedIn is not set it and forget it. It is a project that is never done ever. <laughs> so. Oh, I, I, absolutely. And, you know, um, I, I will mention with clips and probably with clip champ that it's really easy to edit a little bit off the edges um, to do that. Like, if, you know, if you want the video to be 30 seconds or if you want it to be one minute for, you know, Instagram or TikTok that it's easy to take just little bits off at a time until you get to that, um, you know, amount of uh, whatever the seconds are um, that you can use and, you know, and, and experiment, you know, there's so many things that are free, right? Free that you can yeah. use. There's a lot of great free tools. I mean, those are both two great video tools. Like I said, Canva is probably my all time oh, favorite free tool. I've created every, visual component for my business on Canva, my logo, every piece of collateral I've ever done, everything. And I'm not a graphic designer. They make it so easy to, um, to use it, to create great visuals. Um, I love that one. Photo feeler is in that list of really good tools, free tools to get feedback on your pictures. Like there's so many good free tools to use. Um, and obviously they all have upgrades. Yes, you can always pay for more, but <laughs> the free stuff works pretty well. Yeah, and and even you know um, with with photo filler, if you want to pay for it, it's still only like twenty bucks. It's you know you yeah, do it as you go. Way. So, uh, yeah, somebody else just said Canva. Yes, yes, we love Canva too. We love it. So, so Rachel, as we're winding down here, um, what would you like to share that you know I haven't asked you that you think is important, um, you know, to share? Um, I mean, I think it's just, you know, you and I, we, we're, we're, I'm preaching to the choir. I mean, we, we speak the same language when it comes to LinkedIn. I think, you know, there's, there's this tribe of, you know, really engaged and passionate LinkedIn users, but we're a small percent of the overall, um, you know, number of users on the platform. And 
think it's just to encourage people to continue to sort of shift their mindset when it comes to LinkedIn, that it is not it is not a platform for that you use when you're looking for a job only. There's so much more benefit to it. I mean, and I, I use, I've said this multiple times, like I've made true friendships and with people all over the world. Now Clubhouse definitely helped with that. It helped, it's a beautiful partner um, with LinkedIn. But I'm like not kidding when I wanna go on a LinkedIn world tour and I have lots of places to go and visit to meet my LinkedIn friends in person. So to really just get moving and embrace the platform for what it is. Yes, there are lots of wonky things with it too. There's a lot we wish it did do that it doesn't, but we, you know, the benefits really, really outweigh any of the sort of challenges that exist and uh, to just have fun with it. And that's really what I like to really preach with my clients is that, this should be enjoyable. It shouldn't feel like a major chore. Like, ugh, I'm gonna check LinkedIn now. Like, have fun, enjoy, and you get the benefit out of it. You know, I, I love that, that you say that. You know, when I get up in the morning, when I'm having my coffee, I'm scrolling LinkedIn while I'm listening to the news. And Me too. <laughs> and, you know, so, you know, I may spend an, an hour, you know, in the morning, maybe a little bit longer, uh, but I, I'm just watching the news and I'm, I'm listening to the news and I'm having my coffee and what else am I going to do? It's a great use of my time. I get to catch up with yeah. my friends and, you know, see what people are doing and, you know, learn from, from other people. Um, so, you know, I, I really love it that way. I'm so glad that somebody, you know, whacked me across the head and changed my <laughs> mindset. Probably people like, you know, people like you and, uh, you know, so many others that just said, you listen to them and it's like, oh yeah, you know, wake up and, and, and you see the benefit. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I, I try to, you know, I hear it a lot from people I work with, um, you know, with their LinkedIn, they're like, I really don't know how I'm going to find the time to do this. Like, when am I supposed to find the time? And so I try to position it to them as like, look, you take 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes in the morning, like you said, while you're drinking your coffee, just scroll, you know, scroll through. Is there anything you should be commenting on or check your notifications or make sure you respond to messages? Check, spend a little time at lunch and spend a little time in the evening while you're watching TV because you're probably scrolling through something, whether it's Twitter or Facebook. So just shift it to LinkedIn. So just break it up. You can spend 45 minutes to an hour, but just break it up into smaller chunks throughout the day and you'll start to build, like, then you'll start to want to look at it. But yeah. it doesn't have to be like spending hours a day on there to get the benefit. You know, that, that I think that's a, a great, great way to end our conversation. But before we say goodbye, um, what have you got going on? I know there's actually some big stuff going on. Uh, so why don't you uh, tell anyone who's listening, uh, give, you know, what, what you're doing um, over the next week or so. Sure. So um, one thing that I definitely would encourage if people are using Clubhouse is that um, the club that I'm most involved with, which is Bobby Umar's Thought Leadership Branding Club, has been doing a big launch this week. Uh, there's, we're launching, we launched a website, we're really trying to like just take things to the next level. It is, there's so much value in that club. Um, and I have a ton of Clubhouse invites. If anyone needs one, you can just DM me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to share them. Um, but, you know, I, I have a room that I co-moderate weekly with Kenneth Lang and Stephen Quinn about bots and automation on LinkedIn. That's Thursdays at 1230. And then I also will pop in and help out with LinkedIn Mastery, which is every afternoon at four. And next Wednesday is the big launch party. It's a big Zoom party on Bobby's LinkedIn Live, 6 p.m. Eastern. So you should all come. It'll be fun because he is super fun. Um, and then, you know, for me, I just am looking to help more and more people with their LinkedIn, writing lots of profiles, helping to, you know, write non-boring uh, headlines and about sections and, stuff. and uh, creating, you know, trying to have fun with content myself. So um, I really appreciate the chance to chat and, uh, and get to see you. 
I, this has been so great because I've never actually seen you, you know, face to face before. <laughs> you know, thought, thought Leadership Branding, you know, it is a great club. I go to a lot of their rooms. I've learned so much there. Um, you know, in the, the, the mastery uh, that's on, you know, four o'clock every single day, even on the weekends, uh, they have different topics, you know, every day things change and uh, they're, they're, they have really, really smart moderators there. So, so I, um, I love it too. And I will just mention, yeah. I, do have, I do have my own little club on, uh, on Clubhouse, the Smarter Career Moves Club, uh, just like the LinkedIn Live. So, you know, you can find me there uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So, um, thank you so much, Rachel. I so appreciate you uh, taking the time. It's, you know, embarrassing. Even though it's not me, it's embarrassing that we had all these uh, technical, technical difficulties. And thank you so much to everyone who's out there. Thank you, Tamika. Um, we, you know, for people who hung in with us throughout all those technical difficulties. So uh, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. And you too. Uh, thank you. Weekend.